brush coming out. It's June. Manzanita growing all over. We got some sage growing right down there. That stuff really smells good if you crunch it up. And that's a mountain mahogany plant. And one of the things that we're gonna see on this trip, which is really special, is the foxtail pine. They only grow here in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. The Onion Valley Campground is one of the few places you can drive up to them. You gotta hike to see those trees. We are in a far special treat today. And I'm gonna be even more excited than I usually am about my tree videos. Because today, I'm finally doing a video on the foxtail pine. Easy to distinguish from this red color. Uh, these are pretty rare trees. The reason I'm so excited about these trees, you almost got to be in the backcountry to see these trees. Uh, I'm camping at the Onion Valley Trailhead, and I'm 3.25 miles in from that trailhead, over 10,000 feet. Uh, these only grow from the 9,000 foot elevation up to about 11,300 feet. They grow nowhere else in the world. So... We're really lucky to see these trees. Foxtail pines. This is the southern foxtail pine. There's a northern foxtail pine that grows in the Klamath Mountains that looks a lot different. Uh, these are very close relatives and share a lot of the same features as bristlecone pines. They don't quite, quite grow as old because they grow in a better climate. They grow faster. Uh, their wood's not quite as dense because of better conditions. So they, they still live to 2,000 to 2,500 years old, as opposed to the foxtail or the bristlecone, which is a very close cousin. They typically live up to 5,000 years. So uh, these trees, you typically will see them along the JMT from about, oh, probably Muir Pass up to around uh, a little south of Whitney, coming out around Horseshoe, uh, Horseshoe or Cottonwood Pass trailheads. Uh, over Cottonwood Pass is one of the best stands of these trees that I've seen. So when you go over Cottonwood Pass ever, anywhere around Mount Langley, they're the dominant tree. Once you go over Forester Pass between Forester and Whitney, Bighorn Plateau is a place you'll see a lot of them. Uh, Tyndall, that's where they're the dominant tree up high. So they grow up to 11,300 feet. So they're, they don't have a lot of competition like the bristlecone one of their survival techniques is to grow where a lot of other trees don't like to grow. So they're usually not wiped out by fires. That's how they can attain uh, the great ages. So if you've watched any John Muir Trail videos, you'll always see this picture of a snag. Uh, and it's a beautiful reddish color. And as you can see, here's one here. And nobody ever knows what kind of tree those are. Almost all those pictures of the snags you see if they're anywhere south of like Muir Pass, they're gonna be these foxtail pines. So they're pretty amazing trees. And how do they get their name? Uh, see how many needles are on a branch? Your typical pine will only have a couple of years worth of needles. These grow, they can retain their needles up to 30 years. So 20 to 30 years is about typical. Uh, the reason they do that, it's like the bristlecone, it takes a lot of energy to grow pine needles. So it's a survival technique. They save resources up at 11,000 feet. They have a very short growing season. So this looks like a foxtail. So that's how I got the foxtail name. And here's their pine cone. Not very big for a 2,000 year old tree. This tree's probably could be four or five hundred years old even. And they take two years to fall off the tree. Uh, and they're kind of, when they're young, I can't see any of this tree right now up top, but they're they take on a purple, purplish reddish color. So they're pretty cool pine cones. They're wing, uh, they're dispersed by wind. They're wing seeds. So here's another look at the needles. There are five bundle, five needles to a bundle, but they're very short, very thick. Again, that's our survival thing for the harsh conditions. And these, I was trying, able to secure a first year cone I don't know if you can see that purplish tinge, but uh, they uh, grow at the tops of the tree, so I had to look for a fallen tree to get a first-year cone. But if you look closely, 
you'll see the short little bristles. Uh, the ones in the bristlecone pines are much longer. That's how they got their name, bristlecone pines. So these ones were named for the branches that look like foxtails, but in their their bristles aren't quite as distinct. They're real short. So, and as you probably see some sap on there. Uh, not quite as sappy. Bristle cones are just amazingly sappy. Again, a survival uh, technique. So, Sequoia and Kings Canyon is the typical uh, area where they grow. Uh, and it's, like I said, you gotta work. You gotta get up high. You gotta get on the trail to see these trees. Now, uh, the northern ones that there are 300 miles, they're separated by 300 miles, the northern ones and the bristlecones are across the Owens Valley from here. Probably only 30, 40 miles is the crow flies. But they're, they're, they grow up to 12,000 feet. Uh, the problem with these trees is they used to all be joined together and they've all kind of gone into their own, evolved into their own separate species. They're all pretty close re related, but they've been separated for thousands and thousands of years. So they've all kind of come up with different characteristics. But uh, the bristlecones, the way they've been surviving is to keep heading up slope. Those go up to 12,000 feet, but they're running out of elevation. These are up to 11,000 feet. As the climate warms, they don't have anywhere else to go. So uh, they'll, cheek, they'll keep dying at the lower elevations and moving up to the higher elevations. But here, the highest elevations here in the Southern Sierra, besides Whitney goes up to 14.5. Uh, they'll get island out uh, where they'll be separated from each other and eventually they'll run out of elevation and we may see these trees and the bristle cones die off in the next couple of human generations so pretty sad consequence of global warming uh, so get out here and check out some of these trees uh, the best place I said like I said to see them is uh, go up to Horseshoe Meadows and take the Cottonwood Pass trail. It's an easy trail. Get up over Cottonwood Pass, and it's one of the easiest trails, uh, uh, passes in the Sierra. And after Chicken Springs Lake, it is a huge forest of them. Guyot Pass area has them. They grow in these dry slopes. And over there is especially true where they grow. They're the only species that grows up there. Nothing else wants to grow up there. So fire can't get to them, other trees can't move into them. Here's some more of these foxtails, just growing on dry, rocky slopes. There's more moisture on this side of the Sierra than uh, what you see in the bristlecone pine forest. So these are able to grow a little faster, but it's just rocks. Those are all, there's a lodge pole there, but all these other trees, except for that guy in the middle, are foxtails. They grow in spectacular places, so they're worth visiting. Another spectacular snag. Like I said, they last a long time. Just a gorgeous gnarled wood. Here's one that fell over in wind. But you can see that blocky bark for the on the more mature trees. So they spend an, you know, their lifetime in areas where most people can't even get to except for a couple of summer months. So check them out when you're up here. The foxtail pine, very awesome tree. So I'm pretty excited to be up here and just checking out these trees and just sitting here. I'm a little bit off trail. There's nobody here, it's magnificent. And I'll show you where these trees grow. I'm halfway up the uh, the Cursarge Pass Trail, so, and all these trees here are foxtail pines. Some little guys, and there's some lodge poles mixed in here, and there's one of those snags I'm talking about. And I'm just uh, about about a mile off the Cursarge Cursarge Pass Trail, and there's some of those snags. And they're such dense wood, uh, these, they don't grow very fast. That's, a, that's why these snags last longer, because they're so dense. Uh, it takes a lot for 
the critters to get to them. And that's another one of their survival techniques. It's so cold up here. It's a very short season for the insects too. So they can't uh, knock those, uh, they can't take out those trees with decay. Unlike the other high elevation tree that you'll see up here is the red fir. And those decay very quickly. Uh, they're just not a dense wood, they're a fast grower. These are very slow going, growing trees. So next time you're up in the southern high Sierra, on the east side mostly, look for these unbelievable trees that you can only see here and nowhere else in the world. It's pretty special. So I'm going to try and run back to the car 3.25 miles before it gets dark. But it was worth it. If you don't hear from me again, it was uh, enjoyable bringing these videos to you. Thanks for watching.